Welcome to the show with a wrap of Super Rugby results and standings on the back of a hard-fought win by the Highlanders over the Hurricanes, establishing a first-half lead thanks to stubborn defence and not relenting thereafter. Elsewhere, the Blues beat the Cheetahs in a high-scoring affair that would have been even greater with fewer handling errors from both sides. The force simply outpassioned the Chiefs to inflict the first loss on the reigning champs. The Brumbies are starting to emerge as the Aussie Conference favourites after the Stormers' weaknesses were again exposed, though the Tars did make short work of the Rebels to press their claims. The Bulls reversed their earlier loss to the Sharks, who remain top of the table thanks to the cushion of points established in previous rounds, with the Canberra-based franchise within reach. The Chiefs have a game in hand on both, so won't be too troubled by their loss. The Waratahs also happy with fourth spot, given they too have a game in the bank. The Bulls into the playoffs after a faltering start to the 2014 campaign. The Highlanders up to ninth and a chance to leapfrog the Blues when they meet again next week. It's a huge weekend for the Hurricanes. If they drop all the points to the Crusaders, hopes of semi-final action will be dim at best. Now for a change to our regular lineup. Post-match interviews from that Highlanders win will play on Wednesday this week. In the meantime, let's hear from the other assistant coach for the Stags this season, Hawani McDonald. I really start just to be back in the fold and get to work with the boys again. It sounded like a very thorough process, the selection. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, you know, like it was, uh, I kind of joked around a bit because it was basically the first interview process I've been through and, and I, was, I was really nervous and it was just something that, you know, coming from uh, playing rugby for a while that you don't really kind of do those things, but it was, it was a welcome process and I really enjoyed the experience. And working with someone you don't really know, did you? I mean, it was you know Brad at all from the past? No, 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 no. It was um, our first time meeting was basically after being appointed, and he, and he came down. And um, but no, like a like great guy knows his rugby, and and um, it's going to be uh, exciting times ahead. And you know, basically starting from scratch in terms of picking a squad, and get, I mean, there's a few players returning, you know that, but there's a lot of places to fill. Yeah, there's a heap of spots to fill, which is exciting in itself, you know, like guys have to put their hand up at club rugby, so we're expecting big big performances from them. So you'll be spending a bit of time on the club scene sideline and, and surveying the talent, taking notes? Yep, yep, for sure. Like, um, I, I like to pick on form and I like to pick, see what guys are doing and also um, what they're not doing. So you're basically saying you're going to tell players what they need to work on early instead of just sort of picking them retrospectively? That's right, you know, like, um, say someone might be a really good ball runner, but we actually want to see them be hitting some more rucks and vice versa. So it's just about trying to see what they want to be doing, um, what we want them to be doing to become better rugby players. And that helps sort of long-term communication, doesn't it? Because players often say to me, we never quite know what we're doing right or wrong. So you're sorting that out. Yeah, um, well, and, and Brad's been um, um, very good with um, his plan around around the whole squad and um, giving feedback. Like We are going to be giving a lot of feedback to the boys. So... Um, you know, just trying to help them improve and, and improve the nature of stag rugby. And you're working alongside Derms, you, you do know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know Clark, I know Clark for a while. And it's, it's good, you know, like it's a welcome addition. He's been, he's been um, around, the, around the traps like me, you know, like kind of been overseas and you get a lot of experience being overseas. And also, like, you know, he's um, played nearly 100 games, he didn't quite make it, unfortunately, but like, 90 old games for South and it's just nothing you know you can't take the experience away either and he's been working you know like with the Stags and he's been working this year with the Highlanders and so you know like he's um, got a vast knowledge you know like not just about scrums you know like he, he is quite wise in, in other areas too which is which is really good and looking at the competition uh, coming up I mean see what a great job Tasman did very few resources and a lot of um, heart and, and commitment there isn't he yeah, they, they were kind of the benchmark, I guess, for, um, I guess, outside the, the power bases of New Zealand rugby and, and uh, just like counties before, I guess, um, for them, you know, they really showed an exciting brand of rugby. And, but you could tell that they were all together in, 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 one, in unison and kind of going in the same direction and, and they deserve, fully deserved the title. And you look at the individuals coming to that team, uh, Liam Squire and Joe Wheeler and, uh, and Shane Christie, they're carrying that form on and got themselves good super jobs. Yeah, yeah, like, um, and that's the thing, like, they put their hand up and, and they're just continuing their form on from ITM Cup, you know, like, oh, it's, it's, it's good to see, you know, guys coming from the smaller, smaller provinces, like, making, stamping their foot in ITM Cup, so, like, it's, I guess it's something that the guys here can kind of aspire to, they see them doing it, so why, why can it not be them?
and they realise the difference in level and Cardiff's experience is, is a hard he's thrown to the deep end there but he'll bounce back from that one. Oh sure like you know and, and it was a tough tough kick for Cardiff like he he got chucked in the I think on the day of the game I think any time you're not named in the 22 you do switch off you know you kind of just uh, relax a bit and then to be called in just like that how much can you expect and, um, but I'm, I'm sure that he'll he'll bounce back from that and he's, he's a good kid he's going to be he's going to learn a lot from that from that experience and the experience he's going to gain just from being in that super rugby environment Let's just touch on that at the moment what are you making the Highlanders at the, they've shown a lot of spirit but they've got to, they've got to win those close games don't they there's something that's always eluded them Yeah um, I guess it's uh, yeah I don't know what it is really. Like uh, even when I was playing, we lost a heap of games by two, three points, you know, and, and we just couldn't quite, quite get over the mark. But they, um, I think they're playing pretty good rugby. It's just they just make a couple of errors every now and then, and and it just really compounds on on the effect of their game. You know, you miss a couple of one-off tackles, and all of a sudden someone's going to try and the sticks. And those things about rugby that you know, kind of hard, especially I'm talking from a coach now. You can't really account for that you know like someone you know like if a guy has a bad game he has a bad game it's you know you try to fix team up you prepare them as well as you can but you can't kind of account for situations like that but I think I think they're right I think the attitude's back there you know like they're, they're right into it they're, they're all together you know I've, I've been up there a couple of times and they seem really together and, and, and positive and, and I'm sure they'll be hurting but you know it's a good hurt you know like the, you lose a game you're meant to hurt They've got lots of young guys with good attitude, that seems to be, who want to make a mark. Yeah, yeah, well, I guess um, it's a bit of an ebb and flow with, with the Highlanders, you know, like they, when um, Jamie first came in, he, there was a heap of unknowns and they just ran their heart back and they progressed that and then, um, you know, they kind of changed tack a bit last year. How they worked out, I guess we know, but um, it was just something that I think they might be going back to now, um, to kind of trying to get that unknowns back and getting their hunger back to play Super Rugby. Just looking at the Southlanders who are performing at the moment, good to see John Hardy running around without bandages and uh, and running freely and playing well. Yeah, yeah, it's um, old Hardy. Yeah, he's um, hasn't got the knee bandage stuff or anything like that. He's, he's, I've talked to him and he's feeling really good about about where his body is at the moment, and that's and that's big for Hardy. You know, he's he's a tough bugger and he usually plays with a few injuries, but he said he's he's feeling really good. It's a useful loose field uh, grouping at the Highlands. Uh, Elliot Dixon, he's been great off the bench. He's come on and really put some punch into his uh, game. Yeah, yeah, he's um, I've, he's had a bit of an attitude shift. I think I think it's kind of been been brought on up there, you know, like which is really good, you know. Um, athletic wise, you know, like elliot has got everything it takes, you know. Like, I think he's going to be an exceptional footballer. He's just he's just a bit of a work in progress, I think, and I think he'll he'll admit that too. And Josh is uh, fighting for his locking booth, but when he's coming on, he's giving it his all. Yeah, yeah, like um, like they've got quality locks up there, you know. Like they've got um, well, Brad Thorne still he's sitting on the sidelines, and Tom Franklin, he's a young young fella from Targa, he's he's a he's a good young lock too. Um, so the competition's good, you know. They'll all be like pushing each other and and um, trying to raise the bar. So um, hopefully Josh can you know like continue his form off the bench and then try to get a few starts and and really prove his worth. Another issue just to touch on at the moment is the number of top sports people with heart problems. We've had, uh, of course, uh, Buxton's had to retire and Robbie Fruin and Janelle Fowler has been talked about too and you've gone through your own issues. Uh, is it just um, a hereditary thing, do you think, or is it, is it the, the toil of top, quali- top quality sport? Um, I don't know. Like, uh, it's... I guess... Oh, I, I couldn't really answer that. Like, uh, it might be... It's, I think it's hereditary with... Um, with Bucks and all, th- all three of them, I think. Mm-hmm. I think they might have had some issues when they were younger, but um, uh, well, for me, it was a bit of a one-off, but, you know, like, um, it's not something you want to muck around with, really. Right. You know, like, uh, like sport, sport, but your life is, you only get one of those, so mm-hmm. um, how they handle it is, is, is up to them, but I guess you trust your specialists and you trust um, people giving you advice and weigh it all up and then see what's going to be the best outcome for yourself.